Welcome back! I'm so glad you're here to watch my video today. Uh, we're going to learn how to make a cheesecake with a strawberry topping. So first what we're going to do is make the strawberry cane to cut up the little strawberry slices. And I'm just mixing some Sculpey Primo. I have a ratio here of a whole lot of translucent with just a tiny little sliver of pomegranate to make a very light pink color. And I'm going to try to mix several different shades of pink from light to dark. Uh, you just want to gradually add more pomegranate to each little slice of uh, translucent and that'll make it darker for you. And what we're going to do is uh, get those all lined up, several different layers. I think I did about four or five and then uh, stack them on top of each other to make a gradation, like, a, like an ombre effect of light to dark. I saw this method for making a cane by an artist on YouTube. I think her name is Heather Wells. She's amazing. I definitely did not live up to her uh, expertise for being able to make this cane, um, but I do want to give her credit. This was not my idea to uh, create the cane this way. She is magnificent. Please go to her channel and and she can teach you a lot of really cool things. But I wanted to um, use this method. It, it was the easiest for me to be able to create the cane for the top of the cheesecake that I want to show you today. Okay, fast forward a little bit. Now you can see that I've made the canes. I made two of them. Uh, I stacked each uh, one from light to dark. I thought I was gonna make two separate uh, strawberry canes. I ended up only making one, which is fine. I saved the other piece and I'll probably come back to it and add to it uh, since I learned a lot from this one. So here I'm just working a whole lot of translucent with just a teeny bit of white. And I need to um, cut some slices. This is where we're gonna start building the lines inside the strawberry slice. I cut off a couple little pieces here and I, I just felt that they were too thick to add to it. Um, and then I just realized, you know, I'm just having trouble slicing so thin for this method. So I ended up um, just taking the piece and, and kind of smashed it with my fingers and worked it nice and thin. But this is how you do it. After you layer your light to dark, you cut a slice in your cane and you separate it. Don't go all the way to the bottom. You need to leave some space down there uh, in the red part. It doesn't go all the way down. And then you just slide, slide in your little uh, white, mostly transparent um, slice into the little crack. And so just keep repeating that. You're gonna go all the way down your cane. Uh, see here, I had it a little thicker than I wanted. I just worked it with my fingers. Even if you got a hole, you just kind of smash it back. It doesn't matter. And slide it down in there. And uh, just keep working this cane all the way down. Um, I started uh, cleaning up some of it. I didn't realize that. I was like, why do I have so many, so much at the top here? It's kind of big. Uh, so I'm just cleaning it up. I hadn't realized yet that I didn't put the slice of white all the way to the bottom. I, you will see here that I did, yep, yeah, right here. Oops, I forgot to put it all the way to the bottom. I probably should have cut another little piece and stuck it down in there, but then I just was like, you know, let's just keep going with this. I don't, I, I'm not gonna mess with that. So I uh, cut another slice down and I'm getting another little thin uh, white slice. The thinner you can cut it and not have to work it with your fingers, the better, it'll make it less messy especially if you cut the white the same size as the uh, ombre piece, it'll be easier just to fit the exact slice down in there. So you can see here that I'm just cleaning up 
the cane that I've put together. I've got all the little white slices now put in there. Um, I didn't like the way that little chunk looks, so I, I'm, I'm hacking away at it. I'm trying to get rid of it and cleaning up the top and the sides, I, uh, not the back where the red is. I didn't need to do that. I just really wanted to see if I had the stripes done the correct way. I couldn't really remember beyond the first step of what Heather had taught on this too much uh, if she actually cleaned this up or if she even needed to, but it worked out fine for me. Um, I just cut into it and I saw all the be beautiful little white stripes in it and I thought this is going to work just fine for making my cane. I do want to apologize for the little fuzzy thing that's been in the bottom right corner of the screen. I didn't know for the beginning of the recording that I actually had the camera uh, over the mount a little bit and it made it fuzzy. I do apologize for that and I'll try to be more mindful going forward to get it just right on the, on the camera mount. So here I've cut a mostly translucent, which is the pinch of white, just like the stripes that we made, uh, a section. I've, you've put it, I put it across the entire top part of the cane to tie in those white lines. And we're actually going to cut this cane down the center. You can see here, I'm smashing it. I'm trying to make it a little fatter. I started getting a little nervous about the fact that it was so thin and I keep checking my razor blade, you could tell there, because I keep turning it upside down and smashing it, the razor part into my fingers. I haven't cut myself, I'm okay. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's a little sharp, so I'm being careful. But you can see here, I have cut the cane in half and put the white sides together. You can see the strawberry slice already starting to take shape here. And you wanna smoosh the bottom part together, the red, and combine that. Um, I wanted to put a little section of pink in the middle here. So this is where I just grabbed some of my scrap. I thought, oh, there's plenty of white there and a little pink and I'll just mix it all up and we'll recycle some of these cut pieces into the middle of this cane. So I went with white first and I laid a section in there, cut it off, put the piece on the other side just to thicken up the white a little bit. Then I went forward with the pink in the middle to add some color. You want to work it. You can go online and just look up some strawberry slices and see what they look like. Here you can see I was like, I'm going to put a little chunk of red in there and it just didn't work out. So I went ahead and, and completed it properly by just pulling down the sides of the red and pinching it together and it worked out great. And here I put the pink part in the middle and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, kind of take a look and see what I've done and if it looks correct. Um, you could really pull up some uh, lots of strice, sliced strawberry, excuse me, sliced strawberry photos on Google and uh, just see what they look like. Try to build yours towards your favorite image and uh, it's not that hard. So um, here I just took my stylus. I thought I would push the clay down into the hole and, and uh, try to smooth it out and clean it up a little bit. I don't know that this was necessary. I'm not that experienced with cane making. It's not that hard. You can give it a go. Look up your favorite pictures. Just keep piecing in sections in the middle to make this slice look complete. I would advise you, though, from my experience on this one, to make it much thicker. Don't go thin like this. This was very difficult for me to go back and try to smash it wider and smaller to make the cane. I just got it too thin. Uh, because of my inexperience with uh, cane making.
Here I've added another section of red around the outside to thicken up the red and I've started smashing and squishing and just slowly working this thin cane that I had made into a fat little cane. Uh, all the while you want to try to keep that strawberry shape the best you can. I was pinching the bottom a little bit as I went along and keeping the top part a little bit flatter and the sides smooth. and just trying to uh, work it down into a nice chunky shape where I could start rolling out my canes. And you can see here, I got to the point of where I felt that I had done enough and I slowly started pulling and gliding and smoothing that cane out longer. Um, we're gonna just keep doing that till I get it to the right size to be able to start cutting the strawberry slices. But uh, don't forget to keep slowly uh, pinching and keeping that strawberry shape. The ends are gonna look weird. They're not gonna look correct. Um, uh, it starts to make you a little stressed out as you're working it, but as you get it worked longer, you take, see, I took a slice off there. I had to peek just a little bit to make sure if I was like, is it still in there? Is the work that I did still in there? And I cut a slice and it, it's still in there. Um, you can see here I was continually uh, stretching it, but I was also trying to fatten it a little bit because I felt like my strawberry was too elongated. It was a little stretched out and you know, strawberries come in all shapes and sizes and a lot of strawberry slices are elongated, but I wanted to have some that were a little chunkier and fatter and cuter, I think. You can see here that I stretched the cane out to what I felt was the proper size. I give it a quick measure here just to make sure. Um, however, I did cut a lot of strawberries in a very tiny size. I cut some that I felt was a more accurate size. And then I cut some that were larger that I thought I would use throughout this Strawberry Manor dollhouse maybe in a signage or something. I don't know. I may not use it for that. I may end up just cutting them up and putting them in some jelly uh, jars or something. I have some new molds. I'm going to make some jam, but uh, this is going to be a very fun, colorful dollhouse to keep me cheered up. It's a little, little cold uh, here in Georgia at this time of the year. Uh, it's uh, winter for us and I really like the sunshine. But you can see here how beautiful these strawberries look. And I did a nice slight cross cut for you to see here. Uh, sorry, it's, it's not very good in focus. And the camera footage is sped up a little bit. So uh, I do apologize for that. But just keep working your cane. I used every slice I could. I stretched every little piece out. And I made piles of strawberry slices so that I could use them anytime I wanted.
So here I'm trying to show you a close-up of all the little slices. They look so pretty. Some are a little crooked and some are bigger and smaller. Some are thicker and thinner, but I just love them all. And uh, here I'm showing you where I have uh, stretched the back of the cane around. I didn't show you that part in the video, but you just pinch the back of the red and, f and form a half strawberry shape before you slice the cane. And I put some little dimples into it with a stylus. I've baked everything here. It's finished and I'm adding a little gloss varnish. So I have some uh, four half strawberries that I wanted to use for a project. And then I just gloss some of the uh, non shiny side of the strawberries that I had baked. They turned out really cute. So now comes the part of the video that I was uh, getting to, which was the cheesecake. I uh, just rolled out some clay here for the cheesecake part. I used some popsicle sticks that were a little thicker to try to make the cream part of the cheesecake thicker and cut it out with my X-Acto knife. Um, I tried to make two cheesecakes to start out and I realized that I didn't have quite enough filling uh, on that crust to make it nice and thick the way I wanted. So I ended up uh, taking the cheese, the cheese part from the crust and uh, from the second cake and putting it back on the first. I can make another cake later, which I plan to do because I wanted to do one with a slice in it and feature more of the inside of the cake. That looks really cute when there's a cake and then there's a little slice on the side. So um, here I've just uh, cut out some of the filling and I used a little cup that I used for uh, mixing paints to, to measure the size. It seemed about to be about one inch, so that was perfect for me. And here I'm swapping out my popsicle sticks to thinner popsicle sticks. The depth on them isn't quite as thick, and I'm uh, just trying to tape them down. I have some washi tape here. It's lost its stick a little bit and I got them too thin so I'm just trying to get the right uh, width in there to be able to roll out the crust. For the crust I just used a brown and I think it had a little white in it just softened it up. I, I didn't intend to mix the color as close as possible. I was going to do more of the uh, chalk pastel on it when I was done but I had this available so I just went ahead and tried it. I think it turned out a pretty pretty nice color for the cheesecake. Uh, we had that nice bronzy effect like a like a graham cracker crust almost maybe made a non-baked cheesecake I think <laughs> and here you can see I'm just measuring once again with my little plastic cups that I use for everything I definitely try to recycle them as much as possible and pull the paint out or pull the varnish out and reuse them so I don't have so much waste but they come in a really giant pack on Amazon I mean I think there's a hundred or two hundred cups in it and they've been so helpful for using uh, resin mixing and, and various things that I just really couldn't squirt something out on a piece of paper to make my miniatures. I need both the cross. Um, I've cut them out with my X-Acto blade and removed the popsicle sticks. So I'm gonna release them from the tile and stack the cheesecake filling on the top. Like I said before, I, I hear I tried to make two cheesecakes. I was gonna do one whole and then one with the slice. But I just, uh, after I cleaned it up here with the wet wipe and got the sides nice and smooth and incorporated the two pieces together a little bit more, I realized it just wasn't quite thick enough and I didn't have enough clay worked up to go ahead and cut another slice. So I stole it from the second cheesecake. Sorry, sorry, second cheesecake. We'll have to make you another time. So here's where I robbed the second cheesecake and I tried to fit it in there a little bit and make it work better with the baby wipe and smooth it out, get the sides evened up, but it definitely needed that thickness for the height that looked much better. Um, as you can see here, I'd already worked the cheesecake some. I was trying to put some texture on the cake part and I had stippled the crust. I really wished I would have left it just like this and had just the cheesecake by itself with, uh, without the step that I do next. I decided 
out of the blue about here. Oh, I think I'll just make a crust and wrap it around the side um, and, and make the tall crust and do it that way, which I guess is fine. I, I just really like the cheesecake more at this phase where it looked cuter with the with the the cheese on the top. So I just grabbed the the other crust that I had made and, a, and an extra piece of the clay that I had worked up and I decided to go ahead here and roll out the uh, the piece that I would wrap around the side. So you can see I'm using the thicker popsicle sticks for the crust and I have to adjust them a couple times. I think my tape had come loose and it was just really worn out. I really should have gotten some more washi tape at this point and I was like, oh, let me fix that and I stuck my finger in it, made a nice hole. So I was struggling a little bit with this crust. I just wanted to get that little narrow piece for the side. So it worked out fine. I had enough there available to use to cut a nice straight band for the side. I checked out the back, it looked worse. <laughs> so I flipped it back over and <laughs> said, let's just go with the side. So grab my razor blade here and I'm gonna cut a, a band to add to the side and I will work to incorporate that into the bottom and you'll see that in the next part. just working the polymer clay with the baby wipe and the stylus to incorporate the band into the base and make it look good. I came back and finished it a little bit more before I baked it in the oven and really blended the bottom together so that if anybody does look at the bottom of my cheesecake, it's not terrible. It's not perfect, but it's not terrible. You know, we want to make those bottoms look good as well. Then I took my stylus, I came in on the sides and added that crumb texture to it to make it look like a no-bake cheesecake with the graham cracker crust. I wasn't completely happy with it. I thought that at the end, my crumb texture looked a little large in the photo and I thought that my cheesecake looked a little narrow at the top compared to the base even though I, I was trying to fix it by pressing it in with my nails and stuff so next time I'll be a little bit more uh, aware of how I make the cheesecake and try to make it more straight on the sides and I'll leave that that uh, band of crumb texture off the side until I learn how to get the proper technique down to make the the crumb crust look a little smaller but I I was happy with it I took some resin, added some red ink uh, colorant to the resin, added the strawberry slices and topped it, uh, cured it, and when I was finished I glossed the strawberry part and I matte varnished the base. You can see here it's still a little wet in my hands but it dried nice and it looks cute. It'll be really sweet in my strawberry manner with all of the desserts and goodies that I'm going to add. So anyways, this turned out really cute, uh, in my opinion, from my first try making a cheesecake. And I just thank you so much for watching my video and learning with me. Um, if you have any comments or things that could help me, please, please leave a comment below. I really enjoy it. And thank you so much. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.